This movie is set in the wonderful Wild West. To be specific, the northern Great Plains in North America in the year 1719. The main character, Naru, a young member of a Comanche tribe, likes to sleep in, so after being kicked awake, she embarks on her daily responsibility of foraging for grub. Per usual, she's successful in capturing the goods, in this case a single chodish-looking carrot, but also as per usual, her job is boring as all get out for her, so she gets distracted by a tree, which she feels the need to brutalize with her tomahawk. No trees were harmed in the making of this film, hopefully. Luckily for the tree, she gets distracted by dinner. I mean, a deer, which she makes a plan to kill through the use of sign language with her dog. Unfortunately, everyone gets spooked by some plane flying overhead. Actually, Probably not a plane, considering this is taking place in the early 1700s. Anyways, this ultimately results in Naru and her dog not killing the deer. But this was a perfect opportunity for us to find out that Naru's dog is either really stupid or weirdly kinky. Because he found a way to get his tail, not his leg, caught in a bear trap. Like, how do you do that? Movie magic, I guess. This also gives us an opportunity to find out that Naru actually has some pretty good healing skills and is a top-level carrot finder on top of being a crazy axe thrower and shitty hunter. And she's also got to have ADD because she heard some thunder while trying to break the bear trap off of the chain it was attached to and completely forgot what she was doing. As she's leaving the woods, she notices what's been making all of the thunder noise the whole time. It's obviously been a thunderbird. Next thing you know, Naru and her brother Tabe are shooting birds down right out of the sky. At the same time, Naru expresses to her bro that she saw a thunderbird earlier, which is a sign that she's ready for her katemnia, which is the hunter's initiation or rite of passage. Naru then hangs out with her mother for a bit, slipping her dog a nice, fat, juicy piece of fish. She tells her mother that she doesn't like to do girly stuff and wants to be a hunter, and of course her justification for this is because she says that Everyone thinks she can't. Not cliche at all. After this, Naru goes out to collect some medicinal flowers for the war chief's bum knee and is on her way back to the village when we cut to the first sighting we get of the Yaucha predator, getting dropped off by its ship in the middle of the woods and cloaking up. And we're back. Naru catches wind that some of the boys are off to rescue a homie from the tribe who's gotten himself into a sticky situation with the lion, a mountain lion. So naturally, she stalks the rescue party who's out to find him until she's found out. Then the boys throw some women jokes her way, and her bro Tabe is like, Chiloni guys, she'll be nice to have around in case we need a healer. And She's a pretty good tracker as well, you know, because of the ADD. So off the party goes. Then we kind of get to witness a microcosm circle of life moment. A bug gets devoured by a rat, which gets snapped up by a snake, which then gets pummeled by the predator and snap back to reality. They find Homie from the tribe. Turns out he was mauled by the lion and is almost dead. The group then takes all afternoon to make a stretcher and administer meds. And finally, they're off to take Homie back to the village. But obviously, Naru's brother, well, he's got to go kill this lion. So he breaks off from the group to take on this lion solo. And his sis is like, please let me come with you. I'm very good at brutalizing trees with my tomahawk. And I also have ADD. He refuses to let her come, but on the way back to camp, she's able to convince the group to let her and another group member go help Tabe because she saw a dead spazzing out snake that was missing its skin and some pretty huge non-bear looking tracks next to the path. So the two of them end up finding her brother and the three of them set up to kill the lion so that Naru can complete her katemnia. The lion ends up mauling the one tribe mate who traveled with Naru while she's distracted by some strange sound and lights off in the distance and she she smacks her head on a rock, which knocks her the F out. When she wakes up, she realizes she's back at camp and walks out of her tent in time to see her brother being cheered for bringing back the lion, which he ended up killing. Naru tells her brother that she believes something else is out there and she wants to go beyond the ridgeline to track it down. Her brother tries to dissuade her with a nasty roast about how she tried to kill the lion but couldn't bring it home. Naru completely disregards the roast, wakes up the next morning and decides she's so badass she's gonna go hunt this thing on her own. So she sets out with her dog, bow, and tomahawk. Cue the cinematic traveling footage.
Next, we see the predator checking out a wolf hunting down a rabbit. And of course, he's using his extremely cool thermal goggles. And right when the wolf is about to kill the rabbit, the predator jumps in, smacks the wolf around a little bit, and then slaughters it. And we have the second predator killed by the predator kill confirmed. Cut back to Naru, figuring out she wants to attach a rope to the end of her tomahawk so she can cosplay as Thor. Well, she whips up a 20 foot long rope real quick, probably took her like 20 minutes, which is super realistic, especially considering it took five guys from the tribe all afternoon to make that stretcher. Anyways, she attaches her tomahawk to it and then starts whipping that ish around like she's the god of thunder. Cut back to the predator freezing or burning, I don't know, all the skin and muscle off of the wolf head and clipping it onto his belt like a trophy, the freak. Naru then passes through a field of dead skinned bison. She stumbles into a mud filled bog, which nearly swallows her before she escapes using Thor's hammer. So much for having ADD. I mean, she didn't even notice the mud pit. She then happens upon a grizzly bear going ham on some animal carcass. The grizzly ends up being abnormally aggro and starts chasing her. Her dog tries to distract it, but eventually she gets cornered in a beaver dam and dies. Just kidding. Come to find out the predator has been stalking her this whole time and he just showed up. And can you guess what happens next? Well, don't worry, I'll tell ya. The bear goes after the predator, so the predator fights the bear and it actually looks like the bear might beat his ass. But the predator ends up knocking him out dead, then spilling the grizzly's blood all over himself like the freak he is. Anyways, while the predator is blooding himself, Naru is able to escape downriver and miraculously doesn't get super messed up in the rapids. You know, an extremely realistic outcome. She then encounters a search party from the tribe who's out looking for her, so she turns into a vampire and decides it's time to grab a drink. Just kidding, she's just insane. After the homies subdue her, they force her to come with them. They're taking her back to the village. But the predator? He's got other plans. He categorizes the Comanche men as predators and goes to town on them after they kill a possum. Naru is actually able to miraculously escape again because she gets her leg caught in a bear trap that some French fur trappers put down and in doing so is no longer a target for the predator. Also, these bear traps have to be fake because her dog's tail was just dandy after getting snapped and her leg only has a small scrape on it after getting clapped. I'm also kind of confused as to why the Frenchmen weren't targeted and eliminated by the Predator for walking up on Naru with guns pointed at her. Whatever. Doesn't have to make sense, right? Naru awakes in a cage within the Fur Trapper's camp after being knocked out again, and this time obviously by the Fur Trappers. It turns out that her brother was also captured and is being held within the camp. The next day, the Frenchmen decide to use the siblings as bait to catch the Predator. They tie them to a pole, but jokes on them, the Predator is after Predators. So, this happens. <laughs> The Predator basically slaughters all of them while Naru and her brother break free from their bondage and escape. As Naru enters some random Frenchman camp, the directors force her to engage in some completely random combat. The justification of which is because I guess French trappers love dog skin. Then we cut to some medical treatment. The Predator's shooting up and Naru's pasting up. Very cool. And then in a seemingly pointless interaction, Naru provides medical help to Half-Leg Harry, the translator, in exchange for instructions on how to use his flintlock pistol. The Predator walks into the French camp, at which time Naru figures out that the medicine that she's been giving out like candy for most of the movie actually reduces blood flow, which in turn reduces body temperature, making it so the Predator can't see you with his fancy thermal goggles. Hey, that could come in handy. Anyways, Big Bro comes in on horseback, knocks off the Predator's helmet, spears him pretty good, shoots him with a couple arrows. It seems like Naru's bro, best hunter in the tribe, is going to win and kill the Predator. But what do you know? The Predator goes invis and Brosif just stands in place looking around. He gets slightly depressed, saying the Predator's after him and it's his time to go. His final words to his sister are, bring it home. 
a throwback to a roast he dropped on her after she was unable to kill that lion. He lamely accepts his fate and gets hardcore impaled by the predator. The village gets the update about his death, and Nara decides to bait the predator by capturing one of the Frenchies and laying him down next to a gun. Of course, he awakes, grabs the gun, and attempts to kill her, but instead gets killed himself by the predator. Because the predator is always looking for the next opportunity to kill other predators. During the course of Nara's interactions with the Frenchie, she downed some of that special medicine she's been giving out like candy, so that the predator would not be able to see her when he arrived to kill the Frenchie. Almost immediately after the Predator completes the slaughter, Naru shoots him straight in the back of the head. And he dead. Actually, he's not, of course. She just managed to blow off his helmet or faceplate or whatever the heck it is. And now the moment we've all been waiting for. The final showdown. Naru is ready to face the Predator and has everything set up to take the beast down. It's kind of weird though because she was able to complete the setup in an unbelievably short period of time. Considering the bait she's using to entice the Predator happens to be the Frenchie's freshly severed leg. We know the Predator prefers warm fresh meat to cold dead meat. So obviously she's trying to attract him and shoddy it worked. Anyways, she posts up in a tree which hasn't been a terribly strong position for her in the past and waits for the Predator to approach. He of course does and she jumps about 20 feet landing on top of the predator stabbing him getting green fluorescent blood everywhere she's then knocked to the ground uses a special dog attack runs away really fast cuts his arm off gives him an oh shit look kind of matches him in close combat almost gets her head chopped off rips out one of his teeth and stabs him with it uses another dog attack to wrap her rope around him pulls him into the mud pit and makes him inadvertently shoot himself of course she then returns to the village all painted up with predator blood and carrying the head of the slain beast and tells the clan they've got to move because there are Frenchies around and it's no longer safe to live in their current location. The movie ends with her getting promoted to warlord of the tribe, which is something she never knew she wanted, but loves the feeling of being the most badass girl on the block. The end.